If you own a Google Home, a Home Mini, or the Behemoth Home Max Smart Speaker, then you already know how useful they can be. Today I'll show you some tips and tricks for use with Google Home. Instead of going over the Google Assistant voice commands that can be used with Google Home, which I've already covered extensively in other videos, this video will primarily focus on the settings that give you more control of your Google Home speakers. Let's get to it. Before we get started, to set up or make any changes to your Google Home speakers, you will need the Google Home app installed on your device. In addition to Android, if you have an iPhone or iPad, you can also get the app for iOS. Being able to play music on your speaker is a feature that most people use, but if you have more than one speaker and want to synchronize your music to play on all of your speakers at the same time, you will need to create a home group. This is a very cool feature to be able to listen to your music throughout your home and for entertaining guests. But it's not obvious on how to set it up within the app. So here's how you do it. Tap on the devices icon in the top right. In the top right corner of the speaker you'd like to be in the group, tap the menu icon. Then select create group. For this to work, all the devices must be connected to the same Wi-Fi network. You can rename the group if you want to. First, I'll change the name of this group, and I'll call it Home Party. Then, tap on the empty boxes to the right of the audio device name to add them to your group. Make sure the slider here at the bottom is turned on. When you're done, tap on Save in the upper right. When it's done creating that home group, at the bottom of the Devices page, you will see the group that you just created. Now when you want to play music at the same time on all of your speakers, you would use the command play music on the group name. For example, if I wanted to listen to Elton John on the home group I just created, I would say play Elton John on home party. You can replace the name of the artist in the command with the name of a song, album name, music genre, or the name of a playlist. Now let's jump into the settings menu by tapping the icon in the top left and then tap on Music. The most popular music service is Spotify, but it has a major problem. It does not allow for different streams to multiple devices at the same time. So if you have a person that shares your account listening to Spotify on their phone, you won't be able to listen to Spotify on any other device, including Google Home. For that reason, I recently switched my service over to YouTube Music, which does allow for multiple streams. Let me know in the comments. If you use a service other than YouTube Music that offers streaming to multiple devices at the same time. Back in the Settings menu, halfway down the screen, select More Settings. This is where you'll make most of the changes in this app. Now I'll quickly go through the settings you should know about. Below Personal Info, tap on Preferences. Selecting Assistant Voice now gives you eight voices for you to choose from. Each are now identified with a different color name. My preference is the red voice, which is the original. This is a cool one here. Tap on Continued Conversation. This recently added must-have feature removes the need to say hey or okay followed by the word Google every time you give a command. Turning on the slider for Continued Conversation will keep the microphone open for eight seconds after the assistant finishes its response. So you can give more commands without using the wake words every time. Back in the More Settings menu, I'll skip through the rest of the section and scroll down to Devices. Here you can tap into each of your devices to make changes to them individually. And included, at the bottom of each one, you have the choice to unlink your account from each of these devices. Let's now take a look at the Services section. Music is the same as what I already showed you on the Primary Settings screen. Also duplicated here in More Settings, is home control. All you need to know about this one is that it shows you your enabled home speakers and other smart devices connected to your home app. It's a good idea to tap into these devices and assign a room. Tapping on rooms at the top will show you how many devices are assigned to each room. The new settings are useful to change if you're a news junkie. If you use the voice command, listen to the news your speaker will play the news from sources in the order listed. 
If you tap on Change Order in the upper right, you can drag and drop your news sources wherever you want them. Below News is Routines, which is very useful to get the assistant to perform multiple actions with just one command. For example, there's a routine called Good Morning. Just by saying good morning to the home speaker, it will give me the weather forecast, today's calendar, reminders, and when it's done with those, it will read me the news. And you can change these to whichever settings that you prefer. There are currently six preset routines. To create a custom routine, just select the plus sign in the lower right. You just tap in where it says Add Commands to enter a voice command, Add Actions, and then add your media. When you're done, select the check mark in the top right to save it. Let's skip over these others and check out videos and photos near the bottom. If you own a Chromecast or Chromecast enabled TV, you can have the assistant on your home speaker display services including Netflix along with your photos on your TV screen. These supported services require you sign in and link accounts. Google Home does not support Roku streaming devices so this is a feature we cannot use. But if you own a Chromecast, this is a feature you should take advantage of. That's about all I wanted to show you in the Google Home app. I would also suggest that you check out the If This Then That app for Android and iOS, where you can find user-created applets that increase the functionality of your Google Home speaker. It's my favorite app of all time. Most of you that follow this channel are probably sick of hearing me talk about it. It's easier to use than it looks. Instead of duplicating content here in this video, if you want to see a quick demo in another recent video on this channel on how to create your own applets, I'll put a link to that video in the description. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new. If you have any additional tips for use with Google Home, let us know about them in the comments. If you're new to this channel, click on the subscribe button and bell notification icon so you don't miss out on the newest videos from Tech Gumbo.